Pro Call 219 here, and if you're watching this video, you're either watching it the day before opener, or I'm already in my tree stand, you're watching it the next day. So opener is tomorrow. There's a lot of, I don't know, you know, traditions that go on in some people's families about the opening of deer season. You know, they do uh, what they do. Like here, we had a meal with venison tonight for dinner. Uh, always, you know, the fruits of the labor. And then other people take their younger generation out to teach them the ropes of deer hunting. There's a lot of different traditions. Uh, but one of my biggest things of this time of year and this point is to see the success that I did on the properties that I hunt. All through the summer, I've been out on these properties, cutting back branches, laying down different mock scrapes doing, you know, some, you know, configuring of shooting lanes, giving these animals a pretty good environment, lots of cover, you know, tall grasses, things like that to kind of keep them in there uh, for the time being until it, you know, turns upon us like it will tomorrow, which is opening day. That's where I get to see if I'm going to be successful or if I'm really going to struggle. I've learned that through the last few years, documenting me going on these hunts and learning going back to, to my own footage and learning the process through there. And then uh, again, listening to others that really know how to manicure a property. I've taken some of those things that, I, yeah, I found them on YouTube and instilled them in what I did on these two properties. And it's worked. It's worked for the most part, tagged out last year and got a really nice buck. So you, you can't, you can't blame uh, yourself uh, too much. But one of the things I've recognized from what I did this year is give too many options for feed. For feeding of these deer is just too many options. It created a doe factory. And now hopefully I'm, hopefully people harvest a lot of does tomorrow. That would, in my area that I hunt, that would be fantastic. Um, again, the first the first spot we're, uh, that I'm going to that you guys are going to come along on First spot I'm going to, this spot is mainly to shoot a buck. This is the spot to go, and I figure with everybody crawling around in the woods, sitting in tree stands, blowing deer out, they'll blow them right to me. Uh, a lot of young hunters in my area that's got to be patient. Patience, they say, is a virtue. So hopefully those deer will be, be constantly a little bit pressured, not too much, but to get up and just know that eh, we might want to go to this area that we know is, is has been really safe. You know, there hasn't been a lot of people activity in this particular spot. There's not a lot of interaction with people. So it's good, you know, they'll feel relaxed. So uh, one of the things, that, again, that I, that I explained is giving them too much food. It created a dough factory where I went and looked at my food plots, if you go look at that, and they're devastated. And when I pull these pictures that I'm, that I'm gonna show you, because I did pull those uh, SD cards out of there, it's just, fawns yearlings and does uh, a couple of forkies but that's about it and then again we had big ben uh he was the only good looking you know prospect that i've gotten on the camera so far i mean if you've got bucks if you've got a buck or bucks picked out right now you're you're in a better spot than me you know i've got deer that yeah, I'll, hopefully I get to see you in about eight years, you know what I'm saying, or in four years, you know, because you're, I don't want to waste tags this year, uh, but unfortunately in this spot, since I create, I I believe I created a doe factory by giving them more options than just what the options were already on the plate, uh, plus options that don't frequently grow like turnips uh, things like that, that, you know, farmers in the agricultural fields don't quite do in my area. You know, it's corn, corn soybeans, uh, field corn, things like that. Uh, but I gave them a pretty good smorgasbord and you go look at that video. They destroyed that food plot. So, you know, and now I'm stuck with a bunch of does, fawns and yearlings, especially the yearlings that have been born over the summer that have gotten to this point, uh, and, and haven't got caught by predators or human beings, uh, like cars and stuff. Cause I've only seen one deer hit this year, which is good. Uh, but when the rut comes around, you see a lot more sitting in ditches. Uh, but you know, the, the more and more I see these, these does, I'm going to have to probably burn a tag there. And again, that's a spot where I want to shoot my buck. It's where good deer go. 
uh, good bucks go to, you know, kind of get away from some pressure that's on the sides of me. Um, you know, because it, again, I, I passed on a couple of deer last year. Uh, I don't know if they're the deer that have shown up on the cameras now, but again, I have to take what I can get, but I really don't want to burn a tag on a doe in this spot unless I absolute have to. And it, my hand's pretty much forced because now I just have all these yearlings and fawns and, and nanny does there. I'm, I'm going to have to burn a tag there, uh, which at the other spot, that's where I would primarily shoot a doe out of is there. So there's a lot, there's a lot to be desired from what I'm seeing at this point. Uh, but we're really going to see it tomorrow when, uh, you know, I can actually go up there. I can have a good morning sit. Um, it's going to be really cool in the morning around 50 degrees so that's pretty good but by the time the the daytime comes it's going to be about 70 75 80 degrees in some spots so just going to be a straight morning sit i'm going to see how this area does since i haven't been in there i haven't sat in there all all year only to go in there to put things up and to take the sd cards once or twice uh and you saw hopefully i'm rolling pictures in at this point if not I'll throw some pictures in there. And I have caught a, a coyote on the camera. So uh, he better watch out because now, you know, I, I can't have I can't have a bunch of young deer and nanny does running around, let alone predators. You know, predators aren't good. Uh, you'll definitely not see deer in that area. So if he comes by, it might turn into a coyote hunt at that point. Uh, but as long as I can uh, critique myself on all that I've done up that's led up to this point now, it'd be pretty cool to see uh, uh, a lot of things that could change uh, g maybe going through this season and then into next year's. So that's what I kind of look forward to. It's really been on my mind pretty much the whole summer because I've gone and, and done things to these areas to make it a little bit more pleasurable uh, for, for the for the animals uh, when it comes to uh, what it will be tomorrow, which is opening day. So I'll film stuff tomorrow if anything interesting goes on there, and then I'll recap opening day because I'm probably not going to go in, out in the afternoon because it's going to be really hot and I'm not tracking deer at night, uh, not when I can get a gauge on what's roaming through the area. And so, again, hopefully this is the last boring video, and then you see video of you know deers crashing and then you know maybe a, a clean cleaning video of the animal but youtube's really eh, there's a on the channel but don't tell youtube like thank my old and my new subscribers and just the people that zip through i greatly do appreciate it. thanks for sticking around uh for all these years uh hopefully to, this year is gonna be a great year like uh last year and uh we'll catch you on the next one.